Skoda Fabia front door lock, Mark 1, 99 to 2007. When I opened the front door with the key fob the other day, I couldn't open the boot. But could open the boot after I'd opened another door. As you can see, it may lock randomly on its own, or unlock on its own, often intermittently. These and possibly other various faults can be attributed to the driver's door lock, and in particular the micro switch within it, as over a long period of time with constant opening and closing of the door, the micro switch simply wears out and gets stuck in the closed or open position. But it's all fairly easily remedied with a new door lock. So the first thing you want to do is disconnect the battery, Then you need to take out the inner door trim panel. I'll just skip through this. If you want to know how to do this in detail, then check out my other video. I'll leave a link at the end of the video and in the description. Once you've got the inner trim panel off, you've got the inner carrier panel. This one's bolted on, but yours might be riveted on, in which case you'll have to drill out the rivets and then re-rivet the panel when you come to reassemble it. You have to take out the front window glass by lowering it down until you see the bottom edge window clamps in the two access ports behind these two large rubber grommets. If you've got power windows, you've got to temporarily reconnect the connection, reconnect the battery connection, turn the ignition on and wind it down that way. If the power motor's broken, then you'll have to unbolt it from the carrier and wind it down manually. Wind the window down until you see the 10mm bolt clamps through the access windows. Align them so you can get a socket and wrench on easily through the holes. Then release the two 10mm bolt clamp and unwind them until the pane becomes loose, but don't take the bolts out. Then take hold of the window pane with two hands. Use rubber gloves and eye protection. Don't prise it or bend it. The pane will slide very closely to the door frame top edge. I found I could just drop the front edge down releasing the back pillar side and then drawing it upwards following the line of the door. Put that safe to one side. Pull off the protective bellows that house the cables going into the door. Then detach all the connections on the air pillar. Feed the cables out of the bellows. Turning to the door handle, you need to remove the lock barrel. It's held in place with two screws, a top grub screw and a lower cam retention mechanism. Take off the two rubber grommets with a trim tool to save the paintwork. Here's the two locking screws. Insert a T20 into the top one, nearest the barrel. Undo this a few turns, but don't take it out. If you turn this too much, you run the risk of it, the little grub screw falling down into the inner panel. Once you've done that, turn to the lower screw and basically unwind that until the lock barrel comes out. Make sure it's unwinding nice and evenly. If it gets stuck, wind it back in. If you do this with the door handle open, it eventually locks the tension spring in the handle, making it easier to get the barrel out and the handle. And you need to do this if you're actually taking the handle off. But if it's rusted in, you may need some penetrating fluid and a bit of a trim tool behind it to ease it out.
pull the door handle out, try and ease the lock barrel out. It should come out really easy. A good tip is to reinsert the ignition key and just to give you a bit more purchase so you can rattle it up and down a little bit. Sometimes this can help. As you can see the lock barrel's got a spade device at the end which turns the lock. You can see where the grub screw fits into to lock the barrel. Pull the handle out and release the little cable clip attached to the handle. Remove the two MAXZN bolts holding the catch. Detach the connections to the wing mirror, then loosen and take out all the bolts. Or if you've got pop rivets, then drill all the pop rivets out, making sure the drill bit is the same size as the pop rivet, taking care just to drill the rivets and not the surrounding material on the carrier or the door. Detach the rubber gaiters on the lock indicator and the catch cable. Then split the uh, seal all the way around the uh, carrier. You'll find it's just stuck there. I've had this off before so it comes off easy. And slowly but surely jiggle the carrier out of the door together with the attached lock mechanism. Although my hanger's broken on mine trying to yank it out without the, taking the bolts off on the catch on a previous occasion. Here's the carrier with the lock attached. Disconnect the electrical connection, turning it over, push the grommets through the carrier itself. Locate the holding tab just here and you need to push down on the clip and push it out and at the same time ease all the other cables out of the carrier. Be careful not to bend or twist especially the indicator arm as this can break the actual catch. Once you've got it free you can move the indicator arm about 90 degrees to one side and then gently take it out. Pull the release catch Bowden cable out of the holder. Again turn 90 degrees and remove the angled nipple end. There's a number of different models of these depending on which type of central locking that you have so be sure to buy the right one for your model of car. As I've mentioned on previous occasions these catches eventually wear out but it's usually the micro switch within the catch itself that goes first as with constant opening and closing the actual switch itself wears down and as you can see it shows some signs of wear although the micro switch still works and functions so I'm just going to put mine back as it is wait till it fails and then replace it obviously a new OEM catch is going to last longer you could of course replace just the switch if you can get hold of one replace the indicator arm rod and the Bowden release catch cable. And reinsert back into the carrier. Feeding the rubber gaiters through. Reattach the electrical connection. And reinsert it back into the door.
try and feed the electrical cables through the end of the door. Gently jiggling it into place until the two side pins uh, marry up onto the door. Once the pins are located then you can replace all the bolts or replace all the pop rivets. Place all the bolts in loose to start with. You can put some Loctite on if you want. And then initially tighten the bolts from the centre outwards, randomly. Then re-tighten them all to the correct torque, which in this case is 8 newton meters, tightened in random sequence. Replace the two catch bolts with a little bit of thread lock on them. And tighten to the correct torque. Fish out the little catch cable and press home the lugged end into the tooth slot on the handle in the closed position with the cable rested, not tight or loose. Replace the lock barrel and tighten home the screws. Then replace the two grommets. Refit the glass by sliding it in at an angle. Use rubber gloves and eye protection. Ease it down into position. Again, don't force it or bend it in any way. Take your time and keep hold of it at all times. Ease it towards the front of the door and then the rear will just slot in and down, marrying up with the pillar slot. You should be able to feel it going into the clips. Make sure it's firmly down into place, then tighten each retaining bolt. <coughs> to the correct torque. Refit the electrical connections. At this stage I like to fit all the connections and then just test the window works before putting the inner trim panel back. Thoroughly test the lock. manually as well. That's all working fine. Replace the rubber gaiters. And the large access grommets. Make sure they're nicely seated. All we've got to do is put the inner panel back and the job's done. And the job's a good one. And thank you for watching. I hope this helped you out guys. 
I'm sorry the video is a bit brief in places as I haven't had a great deal of time to put this one together due to a family medical emergency. So I will bring a more detailed version out, expanding on a few things that I haven't shown in this video. So be sure to check that one out. And a special thanks to those that gave supportive messages last week. I really appreciate that. Anyway, that's all for now. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.